Hello everyone, Kusto Christopher VFX here. Today I'm going to show you a super efficient and easy way to make a detailed and realistic explosion using the Fume Effects plugin for 3ds Max. Alright, so first off, make sure you're under the Create tab. Then you're going to go under uh, Geometry and in the drop down menu, select Fume Effects. We're going to click Fume Effects right here. And then we are going to click and drag and create a little box. Don't worry, we're going to be changing these parameters right now. So, under this Fume Effects grid, we're in these properties right here. I'm going to change the width to 1600. I'm going to change the length to 1100. And I'm going to change the height to 1500. So now that we've created our Fume Effects grid, we are going to add some simple sources. We're going to go up here to Helpers. We're going to go drop down menu and click Fume Effects. And then click on Simple Source. Once we have that selected, we're going to go here inside the grid and click and drag to create the first simple source. And we are going to drag this over to the left side. And this is going to be accounting for wind. Here, let me zero everything out here just for a second. And there we go. Alright, so now that we've made our spherical simple source, Let's drag this up so it's above this line. We are going to make two instances. And we're going to press shift. We're going to drag. We're going to say, first we're going to make a copy. And we're going to change this to a cylinder. And then we're going to drag the cylinder over again. Just to the past the sphere. And we're going to make this an instance. So the difference between a copy and an instance is that when you make a copy, it just copies over, say, the sphere as it's in its original form. What an instance is, is that whatever change is made to this cylinder, the cylinder is also going to change too. This can be very helpful and efficient. So what's going to happen next is that we're going to resize these. I'm going to put my sphere to be about 75 and my cylinders to be about the same. So now that we've created and rescaled our simple sources, we are also going to go up to here. I like to use the angle snap toggle for this and we are going to rotate the cylinders slightly outwards. Now, over here, I'm going to go click this so it's looking at the back here. And I'm going to drag these up so that they're not touching the bottom of the grid. Alright, so I'm just going to drag these guys over a little bit, a little bit close to the edge. Drag them right about there. Alright, so we have created and scaled and rotated these, so now we have to add them to our Fume Effects grid. So we're going to go to click on this under the Modify tab. We're going to go open Fume Effects UI. We're going to go to the Object Source tab. Click here. We're going to click on this little button icon right here to pick our simple sources and then go to Select by Name. Drag, click and drag over all of them, select them, and press pick. Now these have all been entered into our Fume Effects UI. My project is set to 30 frames per second, and I also have 200 frames in my project, as you can see here. We have NTSC selected and 200 frames. Uh, keep in mind that I'm just noting this so that when we go over keyframes, there isn't any confusion if your project is under a different frame rate. Alright, so now we are going to keyframe our simple sources. In order to do that, we're going to go down here, press Auto Key. We're going to make sure our time slider is at frame 0. And we're going to select the first simple source. It's going to be the sphere because that is the first simple source we created. So we're going to be changing many of these parameters and we're going to start off with fuel. So at frame 0 you're going to want fuel to be at exactly 100. If you just click this anything off of 
100 and then put it back to 100, it should automatically create a keyframe at frame 0. Then we are going to drag this to frame 5, the time slider, and we're going to put the fuel to 0. Under temperature, we're going to drag this at frame 0. We're going to drag this all the way up. And this is probably going to be 999.9. We're going to drag all the way down to 200, and temperature, we are going to put it at 1000. For smoke, at frame 0, we want the value to be 3.5, and then we want it to change to 0 0.2 by frame 15. We're going to drag down here and go down to velocity. We're going to change the directional velocity parameter to 10, and the radial velocity parameter to 5. Under turbulence, we're going to change the amount to 0.85, scale to 3, and frames we can leave at 3. Going back up here to the cylinders, we just need to select on one because whatever happens to the first one will happen to the second one, and vice versa. First off, we're going to change the fuel parameters. So at frame 0, it is going to start off at 100. And then by frame 5, it is going to go down to 0. Under temperature, at frame 0, we want it to start off at 7000. And then by frame 200, we're going to put it down to 2000. We're going to change smoke, so at frame 0, it starts at 3. And then by frame 15, we are going to type in 0 0.2. We're going to go down to velocity, drag this back to 0. We can unclick auto key now. And we're going to type in, for directional velocity, 3. And for radial velocity, 2. Under the turbulence amount, 0 0.85, scale 3, and we can leave frames at 3. So now that we have adjusted the simple sources to our liking, we are going to add a wind modifier. To do that, we are going to go to Create, Space Warps, and then under Forces, we are going to click Wind click and drag and then we are going to press E to rotate and with the angle snap toggle we are going to rotate this 90 degrees it does not matter where you place the icon because the wind is going to be affecting everywhere within the 3D space with the wind modifier selected we are going to go under modify we're going to change the strength parameter to 30 the turbulence parameter to 12 and leave everything else the same. Now we're going to go back to our FumeFX UI. We can click on the grid here and it will bring it up. And we can't forget to add the wind modifier to our objects. We are going to go under the General tab, Spacing, I'm going to change to 3.6. Under the Simulation tab, I'm going to leave the quality at 5. We're going to get, do some keyframing here, so we're going to press Auto Key, make sure our time slider is at 0. For maximum iterations, we're going to keyframe frame 0 at 450 and frame 200 to 200. We're going to bring our time slider back to 0 and change advection stride to 0 0.25. We are going to keyframe the time scale with frame 0 starting at 1.2. Then go to frame 5 and type in 1.6. Then we're going to drag this all the way down to 200 and type in 0 0.25. To give a quick overview of what we just did, 
Quality, in my experience, only affects the lighting quality within the explosion. Maximum iterations seem to affect the overall physical quality of the explosion. Advection stride can give a little bit of extra detail. And time scale is pretty self-explanatory. It'll slow down or speed up the explosion in certain times where we may want it, and it can give it a more realistic feel. Up next, under System here, we're going to change Vorticity. Oh, first we're going to drag this all the way back to zero. And then we're going to change Vorticity to one. Under X Turbulence, we're going to keyframe so that frame zero starts off at nine. Then by frame 20, it changes to 10. And then all the way down at 200, we're going to change this to 3.5. We're going to drag this back to zero, and then under scale, we're going to change this to 12, and detail to 3. So another quick overview. Vorticity seems to add a little bit of emitter turbulence, which can add some detail to the explosion. X turbulence is effectively wind turbulence on the X plane, which can add much needed detail to an explosion. By turning up or down scale, the warps due to turbulence that are seen in the explosion will either become larger or smaller. Detail will either make these warps more cut out or more softened. Next we're going to go down here to fuel. Making sure our time slider is at zero, we're going to change our burn rate to 80, burn rate variation to 0 0.3, and heat production to 150. Under expansion, we're going to change frame 0 to 5, and frame 5 to 0. And then we're going to check fire creates smoke. So a quick overview of what we just did there. A higher burn rate will give it a flash. So very realistic in many explosions is there a flash of light and then the smoke cloud, the plume. Next, the heat production. This is going to help with the rising plume instead of the smoke plume just sitting in one place, which is not very realistic. And expansion refers to how much the fuel will expand due to the inserted value. Once we've done that, we can turn off Auto Key, and then we're going to go under the Render tab. We're going to go down to the fire right here, and we're going to right-click and click Key Mode. So this creates a nice gradient. What I like to do here is I like to add two points and change the far left one to a slighter, more orange color. The next one, change it to a more red color. And then this third one, change it to a white, or an almost white. Then on the far right, change it all the way to black. And possibly, if you'd like, adding another and dragging it over. This will create a nice white fire effect. We're going to exit out of this. We're going to go down to smoke. We're going to change ambient color to black, or a value of zero. And under the gradient, I'm going to change the first one right here to be almost black. I'm going to drag one out here and change this one to be just a little bit brighter than the one to the far left. Then the very right, I'm going to drag this down just a little bit so it's not completely white, maybe a little bit above halfway. We're going to exit out of this, and we're going to set the high threshold to 15. Next, we're going to go down here, and we're going to check Cast Shadows and Receive Shadows. This will give a realistic shading on the explosion itself. Simulate the explosion. Alright, so once we've simulated the explosion, we're going to create a spotlight. And we're going to do that by going to the Create tab, going under Lights, and going to the Standard in the drop-down menu, and clicking on Target Spot. We're going to click and drag to create this light, and drag the light and target both into position. 
So I'm going to drag this stack here, probably pull this up a little bit, probably drag the target down and away. Then we are going to go click on the target light, and we are going to go under Spotlight Parameters and change the hotspot beam to about 60. So now that we've created and set up our light, we're going to zoom in back here and we're going to click on our Fume Effects tab. And under the Illumination tab, we are going to pick light, go to Select by Name, click on Spot 1, and then we are going to check Multiple Scattering. This is going to give a really nice depth and look to our explosion. We're going to change the multiplier to 1.5. We're going to keyframe maximum depth and click on auto key. Then go back to frame zero. We're going to change maximum depth to two. Then we're going to go to frame 25 and change maximum depth to five. We can uncheck auto key now. And we're going to change fire strength to 80 and smoke strength to 0.001. If you followed all of the instructions correctly, you should probably come out with something like this. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to post those in the comment section down below. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel and give it a like. Also, I will be coming out with a new tutorial pretty soon on how to do shrapnel explosions, so be sure to keep your eyes out for that. Be sure to check out my website at kustochristophervfx.com. There's a lot of cool stock footage effects like this one we did today for really low prices, so be sure to check that out. Thanks again for watching, and be sure to go make some really cool explosions.